Hello, my name is Jack, and I'm a Solutions Architect at Cherubichi. Today, we'll go through the steps to set up and configure cloud access software on Linux to ensure a successful POC. Here is the agenda for this video. We'll go over what is cloud access software and the high-level architecture of cloud access software. We'll then go over the installation step for cloud access software on Linux. Finally, we'll cover how to configure and optimize cloud access software. Cloud Access Software enables users to connect to their remote workstations via PCIP, whether their workstation is located in the public cloud or private data center. Cloud Access Software is available for both Windows and Linux. Specifically, it supports Ubuntu and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Cloud Access Software enables users to bring their existing applications to the cloud without having to re-architecture it for the cloud. It enables a high fidelity graphics experience for the user, enabling full color accuracy and can build to a lossless image. Cloud Access Software only transmits the pixels from the screen buffer of the remote workstation and is fully encrypted end to end using AES. Cloud Access Software can be easily deployed and managed using our Cloud Access Manager as well as third party brokers, including an option to build your own broker. Cloud Access Software can support a wide range of resolutions, including 4K UHD. It can support low latency peripherals, such as Wacom tablets. We support both Windows and Linux environments, as well as private, public, hybrid, and multi-cloud environments to provide maximum flexibility to the user. Cloud Access Software is encrypted end-to-end -end and only pixels leave the data center. We support a wide variety of clients, ranging from Windows, Mac OS, and soon Linux, as well as iOS, Android, and Chrome OS for mobile clients. Of course, we also support our Terra 2 PCIP0 clients, which are the most secure and efficient way to roll out cloud access software in an office environment. We offer both a standard and graphics enabled agent, so the user has the choice of deployment based on the use case. And finally, we support up to four monitors with Cloud Access Software. Cloud Access Software is an end-to-end -end solution when using a broker such as Cloud Access Manager. The remote workstation can live in the public cloud such as AWS, Azure, or GCP, and on-premise data centers, whether it's a virtual machine or physical machine. In this scenario, the users can use any of the client we have available and connect to the Cloud Access Manager. There, they will be provided with one or more desktops available for them to connect to, as configured by the administrator. After connecting, they will be able to use their remote workstation that is virtually indistinguishable from their physical desktops. Cloud Access Manager can also provide power management for workstations on Azure to reduce compute cost when the user is not using their workstation. We are looking to bring the same functionality to AWS and GCP in the future. The first step of deploying cloud access software will be to check the prerequisites. We have an administrator's guide on our support site outlining the system requirements for the agent and the detailed steps of installing and configuring cloud access software. Here is the summary of the steps. First, a virtual machine or physical machine should be prepared with the correct hardware configuration. Then, the operating system should be installed onto the machine. If a GPU will be used, then the graphics driver should be installed. And finally, the cloud access software agent should be installed and the license should be activated. Cloud access software for Linux is a little bit different than the Windows version. Of course, we support both the standard and graphics agent on all three of the public clouds, as well as on-premise ESXi. The limitation with the graphics agent is that physical workstations are not supported with either the standard or graphics agent. If you'd like to see support for the Linux graphics agent on physical workstations, please reach out to your Teradici support representative. Here are the detailed requirements for the graphics agent on Linux. For the private data center, we support ESXi 6.0 with hardware version 11 or newer. On the three public cloud, we support AWS G2 and G3 instances, Azure MV series instances, 
as well as GCP instances with a supported virtual workstation GPU, which generally end with a dash VWS after GPU name. On the host side, we currently support Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, as well as RHEL slash CentOS 7.4 and 7.5. We require at least two gigabytes of RAM on the host with 512 megabytes available for the agent. We require one gigabyte of GPU memory for each 4K display and less if you're running at a lower resolution. There should be at least two CPU cores for the workstation and the CPU must support SSE 4.2. We require the following ports to be accessible. Port 443 for authentication, TCP and UDP 4172 for PCIP traffic, and TCP 60443 for brokering. Finally, there should be at least 100 megabytes available for installation and 100 megabytes available for launch. For GPUs, we support NVIDIA GPUs that can utilize the NVIDIA Capture SDK. For on-premise Tesla GPUs, this may require an additional grid license from NVIDIA to enable the Capture SDK. For the public cloud, each provider has different instructions on how to download, install, and license the GPUs. So please take a look at the instructions for the cloud you'll be deploying in. The download instructions are linked in the graphics agent for Linux administrator's guide. Please note that the requirements listed in this slide and previous slides can change with each release of cloud access software. So please read the administrator's guide for the version of the agent you'll be installing in full detail before you begin. Cloud access software has two methods of licensing. If your remote workstation has a direct or proxied connection to the internet, you can use our cloud license server and license each workstation using the provided shell script. If you're using cloud access software in a site without access to the internet, you can deploy our license server. The licenses will be activated on the server itself and the agent will check in with the license server over the local network. We have detailed documentations on how to set up and configure each of the licensing method in our administrator's guide. Please note the licenses for the cloud licensing and the license server are different, so please make a note of that. So here I am connected to my G3 instance on AWS, um, and the first thing I want to do really is to just to verify that the hardware I want is there, and as you can see, there is a Tesla M60 attached to my uh, VM right here. So first thing I would do is just simply run a yum update. And as already because I already ran this uh, update ahead of time, um, there's nothing new for me to change here. So we're all good there. Uh, next thing I would do is to install the EPL release here. Uh, and it's done very quickly. So. Next thing what I would do is to install the GNOME desktop. So this can be a very big package. Uh, it might take you a little while. Okay, so now we've done installing the desktop for GNOME. The next step would just to be installing the, the DVAL kernels so that we can install our NVIDIA drivers. And the instructions in the next couple of steps are all from um, the AWS um, admin guide since I'm using uh, the AWS G3 instances. Um, if you happen to be using a different cloud providers, um, please refer to the guides provided by them. Okay, uh, and the next step I'll be doing would be to blacklist the uh, new vote drivers that are used because we'll be using the NVIDIA drivers. Uh, this step is optional for you. Um, I like to use Nano to do some text editing, which we'll be doing after this installs. Okay, and it's already been installed. So what I'll do is I'll need to navigate to the grub uh, in slash etsy slash default slash grub and add this to the end of the command line. There we go, and I'll exit out there, and I'll save it. And finally, we'll just need to update the uh, grub configurations by running um, grub make config. 
cool. And now we are done. So at this point, I'll be rebooting the VM itself. And we just need to wait for it to come back up. So at this point, I believe the VM should be restarted. We shall see. Let's restart the session. Yeah, so it may try a couple of times and there we are. Now we are connected back. So the next step would be to install the NVIDIA driver. So this driver you can't um, just get from NVIDIA. You have to follow the admin guide provided by your uh, cloud provider to get the specific version for your instance type. Uh, as you can see here, I'm just grabbing it off a public bucket that um, the EC2 team has provided. So before I install the driver, um, I actually want to install this thing called DKMS. So for Linux, every time you upgrade uh, your kernel, um, drivers that are plugged into a kernel space will be wiped out. Um, with DKMS, what it does is it allows it to persist through um, kernel upgrades. So every time you upgrade the kernel, um, your old drivers still work instead of having to go through and reinstalling new drivers. So at this point, I would run the driver installer. So at this point, if you have uh, DKMS installed, uh, it will ask whether or not you like to register the kernel module. And for me, it will be a yes. Uh, I won't install the compatibility library. Okay. Uh, since I have installed something previously, I would just say I'll over install and overwrite. So at this point, I would say yes, let's run the xconfig utility. And okay, my driver has been officially installed. So the way you can verify whether your driver is running or not by running NVIDIA-SMI. Cool. And here I can verify the driver version as well as the hardware that I'm running. Next step I would do is from the Teradici uh, administrator's guide for Linux. So here I would install the Yum repo. It's installed. And again, running updates once again, just to make sure everything is working. Okay. And finally, now I'm ready to install the PCIP graphics agent. Okay, cool. So the agent has finally been installed. Uh, the next step after that will be to register the agent by running the PCIP register host command. Okay, excellent. So now we're ready to connect using the PCIP software client. Now that we have successfully installed Cloud Access software on our Linux VM, we're going to go through the steps of configuring Cloud Access software using the PCIP agent configuration file. Before starting this process, I will recommend taking a look at our PCIP session planning admin guide, which outlines the various bandwidth requirements for different use cases and the network configurations required for PCIP, such as QoS. When setting the PCIP configurations, you may need to try different values and settings to get the optimal experience for your use case. Teradici also offers professional services that can architect, set up, and troubleshoot the issues related to PCIP if you need expertise from us. Now that I've installed the Cloud Access Agent, what I can do is I can connect to it using the Teradici PCIP client. So what I would need is I would need the IP address of my uh, AWS instance here, and I'll just give it a name. And I can save it so that next time I don't have to type this again. Uh, since I'm connecting for the first time and I did not install a certificate, I'll get this warning and I can simply collect, connect insecurely to bypass that. Now I will need my username and my password. And now the session is started here. So I can maximize this window here and I can start by running the terminal. And just take a look at the man file that we provided. So all you need to do is run man pcip-agent.com. And here is the manual that has all the settings that you can configure uh, available here. Um, but the file itself may need to be manually created. And what we need to do would be to use I've already created the file here, so when I do tabs, I can have it auto-completed. Uh, 
um, in this configuration file, I've already set a couple of settings such as enable build to lossless, um, as well as setting the maximum initial quality uh, to 70, um, setting the max bandwidth to 50 megabits, so 50,000 kilobits, and setting a minimum to 10 megabits, so 10,000 kilobits, um, as well as setting the frame rate versus quality factor preference to 20. So I have a so it's more in favor of frame rate. So these are simply some of the settings we have available here. I do recommend going through the PCIP configuration files and really find out and figure out what settings you want to set and experiment around with. In summary, we went through an overview of cloud access software and the requirements of deploying cloud access software. We covered the installation steps for deploying cloud access software on Linux and configuring cloud access software via the configuration file. If you'd like to find out pricing for our cloud access plans, get in contact with our support team or participate in our community forums, please check out the links in the description below. Thank you for watching this video.